Greetings again, folks. It is the Retromatic Gamer Joven, and I thought I would put in an after action report for the Pro Dice Circuit at Discordia Games in Bremerton, Washington. We had 18 people show up for this event. I had a couple of guys that came on a ferry from Seattle, a couple of guys that drove up from Tacoma. I even got a guy and his son that came up here from Portland, Oregon. I'm not messing around. And I'm going to talk about him a little bit, too, because uh, let's just say he didn't go back home to Portland empty-handed. So I was really flattered to see that many people show up for our event. Um... I want to thank everybody that showed up that did, and on uh, everybody that didn't show up, I want to thank you for watching my channel, I guess, and getting the report anyway. So we had a blast, and, and it, it was great, man. Um, no two decks were particularly alike. There were a couple of similarities. We had a handful of folks running Guy Gardner Rush, but it wasn't that many. And even then, every one of them had their own distinct style and flavor to it. There weren't really any like three-turn kill decks or anything like that. Everyone seemed like they were really ready and braced for action with this one. So there, nobody fought an easy game in the house today. Nobody. I, for one, went three and two over five rounds of competition. But we're not going to talk about me in this episode, no. I'm not even, I was the judge, so I've got better things to do than talk about my wimpy little efforts to make Kingpin a viable card. Uh, it was funny though, and uh, at least I went 3-2, and two, which could have top 8 me if my opponents, or sorry, top 4 me if my opponents had done better. But you know what, I just want to focus on the top 4 decks for this quick after action report. So, um, well, and, and I'm going to bring up a 5th one we'll talk about momentarily. Okay, first I want to put out an honorable mention from my boy Hiko Ingram here. That's the guy on the left. This is a picture of him playing casually with my buddy Mark on the right. He's in the system as Coteal. He didn't do too bad either, but Ingram here managed to pull out the Fellowship Award. His deck wasn't a hell of a lot to write home about, but the fact that everyone had a lot of fun playing with him, and he's seriously outranked just about any other competitor for making the fellowship award he was given store credit and everything for for just being an all-around awesome guy so um, his deck was primarily based around the basic actions vicious struggle and fireball which every time I see this deck go off I want to laugh on the inside and the outside all he's doing is setting up vicious struggle and throwing down a fireball trying to sweep and clear the field and any of the damage he receives goes back goes goes double on his opponent it's just it's crazy man I think I've talked talked about this combo before in another episode, but it's hilarious. The rest of the deck is basically just devoted to milling through his stuff as fast as possible. He had Halfling Thieves and he was using Ant-Man as well. Um, he was using Lex Luthor for some, some basic stall to keep his enemies from using the combo against him as effectively uh, Mystical Elf to keep his life up if he could and Prismatic Spray, of course. Um, but you know, generally speaking, yeah, he didn't do too bad. He only won one match, I think, but the point is none of his matches were, were easy. Every one of his opponents thought it was an interesting challenge because he had such a different and weird deck from everybody else. And he didn't do too bad in any of his matches. So, yeah, he. I want to congratulate our fellowship winner, Ingram. He's an awesome player, man. So in my top four pairings, we started the games with Jim Wenberg on the left. That's my buddy, my homie. Uh, up against Josh Gaines on the right, who took the ferry in from Seattle to come hang out with us today. Thank you, Josh. It was a pleasure having you. Um, so, basically, the deck lists were as follows for these two gentlemen. Mr. Wenberg's deck was a kind of a variation of the Blinding Rage Guy Gardner Rush of sorts. Um, however, he had some other old school but awesome tricks anyways. He was able to flood out with kobolds pretty effectively and morphing jars, picking those up pretty cheap without having to rely on picking up the likes of Big Entrance. Um, so he was buying his guy Gardeners the old fashioned way. With, uh, I don't think he bought his actions too much, but having, uh, with what he had to work with, but regardless, um, he had Spider-Man, which is an interesting old school way to just pull all the blockers aside, so who needs Relentless, right? Pay a fist to Spider-Man and move in. Prismatic Spray for shutting down effects, and of course Human Torch for extra damage. He also filled in the classic Millennium Puzzle as well for spot removal as necessary. He did pretty good, obviously, top forward. But he didn't quite cut the mustard to top two because he got beat down by Josh in a very close game that did go to time. 
Now, what was funny about this was the fact that Josh did admit that if Jim hadn't overlooked the existence of Relentless on the last turn, Jim actually could have and should have won this match. But you know, what are you going to do? Once you're up to this high level of competition, mistakes are bound to be made. And when you make them, you know, you're going to get punished for them. So Josh took the win with this interesting build. Very creative idea for the build, too. I liked this a lot. He was using genetic expert beast, but really, we didn't see Serena's or anything like that, but he was still doing great with having blockers that could poke back at your opponents and gain your life with. Um, but having the cheap morphing jars and stuff was still pretty good, but no Guy Gardner or nothing like that. He was running Jocasta and Cyclops, but he, by his own admission, he never ended up buying either of them. His intention was to use Cyclops to make his human torch deal more damage whenever he'd field things. So, I mean, primarily the guy was just ru bum rushing with morphing jars and the, the common green goblin. He was boosting up sidekicks, making him two twos and swinging. It's not flying sidekicks, but it was enough. He was pushing through a lot of damage with human torch, protecting himself pretty effectively with beast. Um, yeah, it was a pretty basic standard old school deck. Um, and with Parallax for re-rolling and making sure he got the rolls he needed, he, he, it was an awesome competition. Watching this guy play was like poetry in motion, I swear. Or gibberish in neutral, if you ask his opinion. So this brings us to our other pairing in the top four, which was David Christensen on the left from Portland, Oregon, versus Brian Tepfer on the right, also from Seattle, I believe. Um, Seattle or Tacoma, now it escapes me. Uh, hopefully he'll chime in and correct me in the comments below or something like that and set me straight. Their matches were in fact one and one came out to time on a five round match. They had to do the sudden death three turn game in accordance with the BDC rules. In which case, um, yeah, we'll get to that just in a moment. Brian's deck honestly looked to me like he'd pulled out every dirty trick humanly possible in the book and threw it in one playlist because this deck was a nightmare. I faced him off in the rounds too and yeah I felt like I got robbed dealing with him. Not, not to say that he cheated or nothing like that, no no no, he earned the win, don't get me wrong. But it was awesome seeing this thing in motion. Um, he had the Cassie Sandsmark ring of magnetism combo going. A lot of players had a really hard time getting anything to stick on him. He also had the ability to go lantern ring since he had a lot of fists and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't see that come out in my game. And I don't think it really came out in a lot of his games either. But he was still able to rush with kobolds. And he had that iron fist thing going too. So I know my kingpin deck pretty much got shut down by this guy because of Iron Fist. And you know, a lot of human torches weren't able to hurt him much either as if he was able to get Iron Fist out. Um, other than that, it's classic Hulk Green Goliath for board clearing and he was able to push through uh, with uh, the occasional guy Gardner as well. Same stuff, why, why not run the biggest two cost guy there is if you're looking to stay aggressive, right? Um, and of course he was running the Magic Missile Polymorph Classic Combo, giving him a lot of options there for board control. Um, so, unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough when dealing with his opponent because after well over an hour of match time, including playing to five turns after their second game and then having to play a three-round sudden death match to declare the tie, um, the, the game did eventually go to David Christensen using the following deck, which is pretty much a variation of the Guy Gardner Rush deck that we already know and love with a few of his own signatures on it. So he's running Constantine Hellblazer for board control, but he's still running that one-two punch combo of Miri Riem and Guy Gardner that we already know and love and hate, which gets a ton of dudes on the board swinging fast. And again, he's also using... And he's also using the new Black Widow because she's damaged when she hits and if you kill her she's still damaged and it pushes hard. But instead of running like two cost mass characters, he start, decided to, to run Morphing Jars because that way he's got the option to buy them for a dollar even if he doesn't go with the big entrance, which he had. Um, Red Dragon and Parallax and Professor X are all there for just ramp and control over over his output. It's pretty apparent to anybody that knows what he's doing, what he was doing, and why. 
So bottom line, he was able to put a hell of a lot of pressure into the front line, swinging like crazy with the guy gardeners, and he didn't have a lot to fear in defense. So, I mean, all he had to do was keep his opponents on the defenses, and he was able to rack in the kills. And I'll be honest with you, he didn't take a loss all day. So maybe that's a spoiler warning for you, but I'm going to tell you he definitely beat Brian Tepfer. So that means my top two players were... David Christensen from Portland, Oregon, and Josh Gaines from Seattle, Washington. Um, it was very interesting getting to watch how these guys played it out. And they did have to go to all three games, but they were all relatively short games because they basically rushed each other to death in every game. Um, it did not actually go to time, which was interesting to me. But yeah, so they pushed each other around. They, it was... I can't really say there was anything particularly complicated about their strategies. I mean, hell, they both had parallax so that they were able to spend extra energy to roll what they wanted when they wanted to. So, I mean, it just came down to the fact that David Christensen simply was better at putting more dudes up in Brian's face in the last round. So, that's all there was to it. Um, Brian did a pretty good job using Human Torch to nickel and dime him to death in game two. But, I mean, other than that, that was how it is. So that means our champion got to take Washington State State entry back home to Portland, Oregon with them. But I ain't gonna lie, man. I've made the trip down to GameStorm and back before. At least I'm usually down in Vancouver for four days at a time. We're talking about, what, three and a half to four hours of driving that this guy made one way. This guy drove for eight hours. So the bottom line is I'm really glad it was worthwhile for him because he came here, he saw, and he conquered. Or to quote the Ghostbusters, we came, we saw, we kicked some ass! Seriously, David, you said you watch my videos, so if you're watching this one, I still can't say enough how flattered and honored I am that we had you among us today. So thank you for coming out, and the same to everybody else that played with us. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't a perfect event. I did end up having a couple players that had to drop about halfway through it for various reasons, and it kind of threw some wrenches in the works for the WizKids event system, because apparently there are glitches involved with drop players kept trying to pair my drop players against other people. So. But in the, in the end, all of the guys that did come out, where they were really patient with me in the few glitches in the matrix that I had to deal with, um, everyone seems to have had fun. I mean, seriously, 18 players. My own leaguers only accounted for like seven or eight people there. So that means we had a lot of out-of-towners that really honored us with their presence, man. I mean, everybody that works at the store was, was surprised at the turnout we had. I was surprised at the turnout because I didn't think I was going to be volunteering to judge something that was going to wind up even this big. So we had five rounds of grueling but awesome fun and then a couple rounds of top four playoffs in the end, and, and man, it was just an awesome evening all around. Oh, and Mr. T, you can have your lunch break now. <laughs> it's an inside joke, fellas. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. So it was a lot of fun, man. I can't stress that enough. And I've said it over and over in this video, and I'm going to say it again and again, that I was totally stoked to have that all these people come to visit us, man. A couple of guys I even got to meet are apparently v viewers on my channel. So when they bring up that they watch my videos, like... <laughs> Really? I get to meet people that watch me? <laughs> Fortunately, nobody had any problems with what can be an overbearing personality from me. Everybody was really friendly to each other, total strangers included. And it was just an absolute blast, man. It was a great Saturday evening. For the umpteen gazillionth time, thanks to everybody who came out and to everyone that didn't. Well, hopefully this article will give you a little something to learn about. Games come a long way, and to see how varied the deck builds were today and how, how well everyone was doing was really astound, uh, astounding to me so thank you folks for watching this channel it's me signing out maybe on my next episode i'll do a featured article on the deck i ran at pdc if you really want to talk about a deck that ran three and two i'll do it that's fine assuming that anybody else that's watching has already finished a pdc tell me what you ran how it worked out uh give me your score and uh, what kind of things were popular at your BDCs? Let me know in the comments section below, folks. And until next time, peace out and keep gaming. Thank you for watching.